Hey everyone, welcome back to the Awesome or Pop channel. Today we have a delicious surprise for you. We're going to be making this rainbow sponge cake that's out of this world. To the moon! Shout out to how to cook that for the inspiration. But before we jump into it, if you're new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any awesome videos. Okay, so you're going to need two cups of flour in a large mixing bowl. You'll also need one and a half cups of sugar, toss it into the large mixing bowl. You'll need one tablespoon of baking powder. You'll need one teaspoon of salt. And one and a half teaspoons of gelatin powder. Now let's mix this all up. All right, now in a separate bowl, let's crack seven eggs, but we're going to separate the egg yolks and the egg whites. So we'll put the egg whites in this bowl, and I'll move the eggs out and put the egg yolks in the smaller bowl. This part might take a while, so I won't show myself separating all the eggs, but I'll do a couple more for y'all, just in case you need to know the technique. I say it like this is something really hard. Don't worry, it's really easy. If you've watched our baking videos, then you know how to separate the eggs. All right, we're ready to move on. Let's throw the egg yolks in the large bowl. Let's also add half a cup of canola oil. A cup of water. Make sure it's drinking water. Not entirely sure, but I think it tastes better than using tap water. Now let's add half a teaspoon of cream of tartar into the bowl with the egg whites. Now we're just going to mix this until we get medium stiff peaks. Perfect! Now let's mix this bowl to make our batter. We're going to combine this batter and the meringue later, and after it's been baked, the cake texture will be soft and moist. Moist! Who hates that word? I actually don't mind it. Moist! Alright, so let's start by adding a third of the meringue into the batter. Moist! Mix it all up. Now let's add the rest and do the same thing. Our batter was pretty yellow before we poured in the meringue. After we mix in the meringue, we should have a very light yellow batter. Okay, since we're going to make different cake colors, let's grab a cup of this batter and put it into a bowl. Wish I had similar sized bowls for this, but this will have to do. Let's start by making our red batter. Add some red food coloring, mix it around, now let's make orange, now let's make yellow, here's green, here's blue, and here's purple. Okay, we have all the colors ready. Now it's time to bake. So we're going to be using this springform pan to make our cake. This pan isn't deep enough to make the entire cake, so we'll be making three layers at a time. Start by putting some parchment paper around our pan. I had to make my own circle paper for this one. It's a little nifty trick, right? Perfect. Now let's put the edges on. Make sure it's locked. Parchment paper looks good. To prevent the layers from overflowing, we're also using baking acetate around the edges. Just a couple more inches above the springform pan. Okay, just finished pouring in our purple cake layer. Let's put this in the oven. Make sure it's set to 325 degrees. And we need to bake this for 9 minutes. It's been 9 minutes. Now let's add our next layer, which is this blue batter. You don't have to completely cool it, you can just go right ahead. Also, realize we don't need the baking acetate, so we took it off. But you guys can use it if needed. Okay, our blue layer is finished. Now let's add our green layer. And this will be the last layer we bake, and then we'll take our three-layered cake off the pan. Let's use this knife and gently cut along the edges. Now let's unlock the springform pan. 
Move this cake onto a cutting board. Give me a minute. This cake feels pretty bouncy. This cake feels very soft. That's the right word. Remove this parchment paper. Awesome! That looks pretty good. Alright, now we have to make our other layers. Let's pour this yellow batter in first. You know the drill. Bake this for nine minutes. Now let's pour in the orange batter. Bake again. Now let's pour in the red batter. This is pretty simple, right? Alright, now let's check out this cake. Ooh, that looks good. So just looking at it right now, it looks like the bottom layers got squished a bit too much. Maybe I did need to cool it some more before pouring. But very minor mistake, so this is still pretty good. Alright, so I wish I had a smaller bowl. That way I can just use it as a template to cut around the edges. But I'll just make an indent with this bowl and try my best to cut this as evenly as possible. If you're wondering why we're cutting it, the edges will get burnt just a little bit. So you want to trim the edges to get a more vibrant looking cake. Watch, I'll show you in just a second. You notice it a lot more with the darker colors like purple and blue. So this step is very important, remember that. And don't worry if your cake looks a bit uneven, we'll be making a chocolate ganache to pour over the cake, so it should help a bit. To make the ganache, you're going to need chocolate chips and a cup of heavy whipping cream. The whipping cream should be heated up until it reaches boiling point, and then you just want to mix until the chocolate melts and you get a smooth creamy ganache. Once it looks like this, you can stop. Now let's pour the ganache over the cake. Spread the ganache around. Sort of let the chocolate drip down the sides as well. I didn't really give precise measurements for the ganache because it really depends on how big or small you make your cake. So you guys can just experiment with that if you're also making this at home. Okay. We have our beautiful ganache on top, and some of it dripping down the sides. Now let's add some sprinkles on top. This reminds me of a chocolate donut with sprinkles. But woo wee! Look at this beautiful cake! Visually, it looks really pleasing. And to think, we can make such a beautiful cake really easily. Separating the eggs or making the meringue if you don't have a mixer might be the hardest part. But even then, it's just tedious work. Now let me cut a slice to show you how it looks on the inside. Look at that beautiful slice! I wish I could magically send this slice to you. That way we could all enjoy and taste test this cake together. But I do not have magical powers, so I'll do my best to describe the taste. Let me try to get all of the colors. Ooh, okay, that was a lot harder to do than I thought. Oh no, my cake is breaking! Okay, I give up. Tried to make it pretty for y'all, but looks like we're getting messy. Ooh, that's really good. You know, it's a little drier than I thought. Not as moist, but it's light and airy. I think it might taste a little too bland if you don't have it with the chocolate. The ganache actually plays a really big role. Without it, it's still good, but I would recommend the ganache. Mm -mm -mm. Well, excuse me while I go finish this entire cake. Awesome pop fans! Thank you so much for watching. We can't do this without you. If you're new to the channel and became a fan, click that subscribe button for more awesome stuff. And if you want to be the first person to watch our next video, hit that notification bell to have a chance. See ya!